Thank you so much for having us. Um, I, I, I have so many questions for you. Do you get recognized all the time? I, I do fairly often, and it's really interesting people recognize my voice, you know. What do they say? Well, sometimes I hear them whispering, you know, on, on the next aisle. Right, uh, and it was, they think I can't hear them, but I'm, <laughs> you know, it kind of catches my attention. Sometimes they come up and talk to me, and I'm racking my brain. Where do I know this person yeah. from the zoo, from horses? Have I done a program with them? And then as the conversation evolves, I find out I've never met them before, okay. but they talk to me like yeah. I was a long lost friend. They feel like they know me. You People, must have the same well, experience. You, you, I mean, how many years were you at the zoo? Oh, 40. I started when I was 10. right out of high school. <laughs> I was in my first year of college actually. Okay. And there were only two jobs available at that point for women. You could work in the children's zoo or you could be a secretary. Well, I was no way was I a secretary by any means. So, and I wanted to work with animals. So I applied and I actually got hired on call, which meant when nobody else was available, right? To come in and work with young animals, wildlife that was being raised there. And it, of course the children's zoo is for children, but the adults loved it too, because that's where they raised all the baby animals. So it gave me a chance to really work with a large array of different species of animals. Let's talk about that. You're, tell me, what is your connection to animals? <laughs> it goes back to childhood. I was one of those kids that kind of picked up everything and brought it home. And I was just, animals were like a magnet. I loved animals. I didn't know how to express it. I now tell people that's not the best thing to do to bring things home, <laughs> you know, leave them where they are. But, you know, my mother dealt with that. And then my mother worked as an assistant to a veterinarian. So at dinner, we'd have conversations about the surgeries of the day or handling animals. Okay. And I wanted to go to veterinary school. And that was not a traditional field for women at that time. And when I went up to UC Davis to talk with them, I came back so discouraged because there were no women in the veterinary class. And uh, if there were, they were valedictorians of their class. And so I applied at the zoo knowing that was one in 10,000 applicants that's gonna get hired to work with animals. What has your life been like with animals? Looking back, how would you put that into words? It's everything. It's kind of, the animals have kind of pulled me through an amazing array of experiences and challenges because from being hired to work with animals, I was then looked at as a possibility for Goodwill Ambassador for the zoo because of my animal experience. How did you land that job? They opened the job for the uh, 50th anniversary of the zoo, which was going to be a big year of lots of activities. And the director saw that Disneyland had an ambassador and was impressed by that okay. and said, I want to create that job at the zoo and handed it off to the public relations director who probably had 400 women to choose from. Oh boy, and when you got the gig, what'd you think? I didn't get the gig. A model <laughs> got the gig and she was beautiful, but she didn't know how to drive. She didn't know how to handle animals. She didn't know anything about the zoo or even San Diego. So if that was a bit of a disadvantage, they had to send a team of people. The director jumped back into it and said, look, I want to try this young lady. I think she might be the ticket, at least she can handle animals. She has a lot of competency there. And when they gave you the gig though? I was terrified because all of a sudden, the director would be speaking at the Rotary, some 500 people, and I thought he was gonna speak and I was gonna do the animals, and he'd introduce me and said, now Joan will speak. And just, public speaking was, at that point, I was terrified. I had to overcome that. It was like being thrown in the ocean and you just figure out, how to how to swim, right? Okay. And let's so, let's. I have so many questions to ask you. Um, Johnny Carson. What was he like? Very special, one of a kind, and obviously, as we've seen, not to be duplicated. Yeah. Uh, he was very quick-witted. He was very well-read. He was uh, very accommodating in that he was very respectful, which I appreciated because. Here I am, very young, handling wild animals, which are unpredictable. What's that live, like? On, what is that like on live TV? Live on camera with a comedian that's unpredictable. What it was like was taking, you know, 
your final exam in front of, you know, 50 million people. Uh, you know, no room for error if you think about it. I'm, what, 18, 19 years old, and we have the top curators and management that are known internationally for their uh, their knowledge, and I'm doing the speaking. Yeah. If, if, if something goes wrong, yeah. not only does the whole world see it, but all my bosses back at home too, you know? Yeah. How many interviews like this have you done? <laughs> a few. I, I, I gave up counting, I think I've done over a thousand television appearances. Wow. Yeah, and over, uh, probably close to that, in, and animals over a period of time. If you figure we, on the Tonight Show, would take anywhere from, say, four to six animals on an appearance, and we did 100 appearances on the Tonight Show alone. What's, your, what's it all been like, Don't, when you look back on it all? I look back on it, and I didn't realize when I did those shows way back when that they'd still be airing today <laughs> on social media and YouTube, and even there's a channel with all of the Right. Uh, tonight show yeah. you can go watch you know today regular full programming so I had no idea where things would be headed at that point in time and I uh, the recognition factor was a bit overwhelming because all of a sudden I I would not think that way until somebody said are you Joan Embry and then all of a sudden I'm going what did I just say did I comb my hair you know I live on a ranch I go out you know I'm I got my boots and I've been riding horses or I'm dirty I'm not that person on TV and that person on TV had her hair and makeup done and you know dressed for the appearance but I don't look like that all of the time <laughs> so uh, it, it was you know, it, it was challenging, a bit overwhelming, really. Um, wh where are we? We're in Lakeside, and we're sitting on the banks of the San Diego River floodplain in 1915. We're right at the transition zone. You can see the hills up behind us between the ocean and the mountains. We have huge diversity of life here. We have mountain lions. Bobcat brought her cub through the other morning and uh, was walking through the back of the ranch. We have hummingbirds, we have hawks, we have cranes, we have, you name it, we have egrets that come in and hunt for lizards and... Sounds like heaven on earth. It's really quite remarkable, but you do feel the pressure all the time. The road is being widened. Uh, yeah. With casino up behind us now, okay. uh, building. Lots are being subdivided and the big ranches are diminishing you know, by the day. So I think it's challenging in the future to try and maintain that balance of wildlife and open space and the needs for a growing population. Gotcha. Is this called the Pillsbury Ranch? It's called the Pillsbury Land and Livestock because my okay. husband was a real estate broker when I met him and he uh, started the, the whole real estate program for their community yeah. college district and livestock because his daughters were raising 4-H animals and we've always had horses here. We probably have about 60 some horses here now. Wow. Are you ready to take a walk down memory lane? Yeah. <laughs> I look back sometimes and I'm going, wow, that's what I looked like when I was, you know, 20 some years old. <laughs> I think we're ready for it. Um, here comes um, memory lane for you. Probably even <laughs> recognize. My beloved bull. That's the space bar. So this is our hundred year old barn, which we love. And we have everything from wildlife to horses and livestock. This is just the place Joan Embry. And Hal Clement actually ended up keeping his horses here for a number of years. Oh, okay. Just that some of her cats are a little different from the average house We raise a number of cheetahs here for here, our program. Small horses and not so small horses. And that flies down. Wow. Well, my first draft horses, a pair of Clyde sales that we got from Anheuser-Busch. When you're working with a horse that weighs 1,800, 2,000 pounds, they better have. <laughs> it was all my horse experience that really helped me with wildlife because I was used to working with big animals, strong animals having to have a lot of finesse in how you ride and work around a horse. A zebra takes it up a notch. Oh, there's nothing. It's not a horse. They're definitely wild animals. It's her favorite. She's chosen him. 
the uh, they're grabbing some large this, this is this animal right now there are only about two three thousand left of highly Jennifer endangered Christmas, she said i know what i want right here <laughs> well, that was my favorite my beloved drama this is the world's ball. only two thousand pound puppy dog <laughs> you can sit on his back and he weighed 2,300 pounds. You can see the size of him. But he had a great temperament. Did you really call him your puppy dog? Yeah. I mean, he. I used to sleep in the stall with him, sleep up against him like a couch. That was my husband, who I had to talk into buying that bowl. I always wanted a, a Brahma bowl. That that snake got to be right at 20 feet long. Wow. How many animals do you have now? We have about 30 wild animals. We have about 60 horses. And then we have, you know, goats and llama and alpaca. The lemur is from Madagascar. All, all of the lemurs are threatened because about 90% of the forest has been cut now. So they have a very small habitat for their distribution. Well, we have another story to show you um, from uh, your trip to New York. Oh, that was so fun. we want to show you that one too. So we do a run through before the show. One of the challenges on this show was they had a full glass window looking out onto the streets of Manhattan. So the cat's a very visual animal. So he's going to see all that movement. And then uh, you're going to have cameras rolling around. So when people watch something on television, they don't see what's happening inside the studio. You might have a live audience. You might have a band. You have cameras moving. You have sound booms over your head. You have somebody flashing a cue card for the next commercial break or how much time is left for the segment. So there's a lot of activity. And uh, I have to be aware of that. Yeah, I was going to say, um, you always seemed so calm. Everybody says that, but actually inside, um, my mind is really racing to keep up with everything that's going on. I need to be the first one to see a potential problem before the cat sees it or, or one of the other animals responds to it. So I need to anticipate and mitigate any potential problems by uh, being aware of it. Uh, and how to deal with it. Okay. And then you have a host who doesn't feel comfortable with your animals, so that could be another challenging aspect. And there's my husband. He was always behind the scenes. People walk up and say, do you work for Joe? And he's a very humble. What would he say? Oh, he'd just roll with the punches. He said, yeah, I work. Can I help you? <laughs> they call him Mr. Embry. His name was Pillsbury. We're a pair, we're a team, you know, all the way. We have the same loves and uh, that's what made our relationship work. We, we love the animals, we love traveling and seeing the world. What, I know it's a tough question, but what, what has losing him been like for you? Just like my life changed forever, yeah. It's just not easy. I can really relate to all the people in this COVID age that are facing that. You know, it is a huge um, impact. I mean, I'm trying to figure out now how do I carry on and keep everything because we work as a team. And this is a lot of work to keep it all, keep it all going, yeah. You just seem to care so much about animals, about keeping this legacy going. Well, I'd, I'd like to help people understand where we're at with, you know, our conservation challenges and, and how individuals can participate because I think collectively it's all of us that are really going to make the difference. We can't rely on the government. And look at the financial straits now. I mean, it is something that individuals are going to have to embrace and support. And I think people want to help if they just know how. They have to understand first what, what the issues are. We are so fortunate in San Diego. We have the highest diversity of just about anywhere on the planet. I mean, we're talking Madagascar, we're talking maybe not quite so much as the rainforest, but we have our oceans with our whales and our dolphin, and uh, we have uh, our wetlands, we have our, our river, even though they're dry, we have a certain uh, corridors that these animals utilize that river corridor. We have our mountains, we have our desert, we have reptiles, birds, mammals, 
over 500 species of birds here in San Diego County. For That's people just who remarkable. love animals, what, what, would, what is your message to them? My message is that the clock is ticking for many of them and decisions we make today on their behalf, and this is timely because we are all voting right now. We need to think in terms of voting for the environment, for voting for representatives that understand and care about the environment and maintaining what we can for the future, ensuring that you know our kids and, and that in years to come we can enjoy uh, the wonderful environment and animals, wildlife, plants that we have. Well, thank you. Thank you for the interview. I think we're going to still go uh, visit some yeah, critters. Yeah, see some animals. I'd like to share them with you. They like people. Most of them maybe they go out on a regular basis in our education program, so they're pretty good. I can't wait. This is going to be a thrill, really. What, a, what an honor it is to meet you. Uh, thank you. You're, you you that. are a legend in San Diego. <laughs> and you're I've been around a long time, that's for sure. I was actually born right here in San Diego. So uh, I have, you know, my heart is here. I've traveled all over the world. When I fly back in, I tell you, when I'm landing, I'm going, I'm home. Um, this is special. Even though I, I really enjoy and love other parts of the world, this yeah. is my home. I feel and the same way. It will always be, yes.